There are an infinite number of ways to make gold in Stardew Valley, and today we're gonna to be testing the weirdest methods I could come up with. These six questionable farmers each has their own rather stupid money-making method. And I'm gonna be testing how much gold each strategy can make in spring year one. First up, I jumped into Beach Gromit's beach farm. And for this run, I had to make gold exclusively from foraging on the farm itself. This includes any of the forageables that you'd usually find on the beach where Big Willie's shop is located, as these spawn on the beach farm too, as well as any box that wash up on the shore. I wasn't exactly sure how the forageable spawns on the beach farm work, but I was pretty sure they just accumulate and don't disappear. So I figured I'd sleep through each week before heading out again, rather than running around the whole farm every day, because daily run sounds a lot like the depressing behavior of a fit person. And so I headed out on day seven and was surprised to find this little foresty area spawned spring forageables. I wasn't quite sure if these were allowed, but I figured that I had technically said any forageables on the farm, and so I whacked them in my backpack to add to the haul. I also found my first crate with a whopping two geodes in it. I then thought I'd clear out some space all around the areas close to shore because I had a theory that might increase the chance of stuff spawning. I have no idea if this helped, but it seemed smart. While clearing, I destroyed a bunch of rocks and collected three more geodes. And because I'm stupid, I didn't realize this. And so I thought the five stack had all come from the crate and I illegally retained three whole geodes. This was frankly an outrageous violation of the rules, but it's all good. We'll just deduct 150 gold from the total at the end. I then slept another week and on day 14, I had a stinker. I barely picked up anything. And my only crate gave me three mixed seeds, which sell for precisely zero gold. What a disappointing crate. I hibernated once more. And when I emerged on day 21, Marnie gave me a rabid cat, which I named Gnarly because Gnarly is something surfy dudes say, and it seemed appropriate. This week I had three crates, which was very exciting. These got me a coffee, six quality retaining soil and four cherry bombs, very spicy. I then got some more beauty sleep and a work at the end of spring. I quite liked this strategy as it involved a lot of sleeping, which honestly reflects the exact strategy I use in my real life. Day 28 was light on the forageables, but it did have two crates, one with two coffee and one with five cherry bombs. I gave Gnarly a pat and that was it for spring year one. And it was time to see how I'd done. I sold all my goods and came up with 1,830 gold earned. Oh, by the way, the timer is kind of in the way. That's my bad, especially because on half the runs, I forgot to use the timer properly anyway. But regardless, the big earners for Beach Gromit were our three coffees at 150 50 gold a pop and nine cherry bombs at 50 gold a pop. And if we minus the 150 gold from the three illegal geodes, that's 1,680 gold. A respectable effort from the beach grommet. Good job, Cowabunga. Next up, we've got Trash Master and he is quite handsome. In this run, I was all about checking the trash. There are a total of eight trash cans in Pelican Town. And if you click on these, there is a chance that some tasty treats will pop out. And Trash Master was only allowed to make gold from whatever he was able to scavenge from the trash. The highlight of this run was that I dropped some fiber, which landed in the window, and it somehow stayed there the entirety of spring. Other than the glorious window fiber, I spent my time looking in the trash. There were a few days, like day one, where I got absolutely nothing. There were a few decent days, like day two, where I got two or three items. And on day three, I became suspicious that Linus had been stealing my trash, so I went to fight him at his tent, and he wisely hid behind this bush. By day four, I perfected my loop around town. It went something like this. Head south to the two homes down here, and then east, hit up Lewis's trash, then the museum, Museums, blacksmiths and Joges. Finally head back west towards the farm and hit up Georges and the saloons. And if possible, it was ideal to check the trash in front of villages in order to disgust as many people as possible. By day seven, I had a good little haul growing with a red mushroom as my most expensive find so far. On day 10, I chased a rabbit, but it hid in a bush. On day 13, I was not allowed into town, which was an outrage. I waited next to a bush for a while and eventually joined the townsfolk and entered this egg hunt. But I lost because I was very distracted by these trash cans. I returned after dark though, and the trash cans were functioning as normal. So that was a relief. Day 15 was a best luck day that converted into five trash cans in a row, giving me an item. That was a glorious bounty. On day 18, I found no trash whatsoever, but I did find an opportunity to give Pam some fiber as a birthday gift, which she seemed to really appreciate. On day 25, I got the trash can hat. I can't sell it, but it looks great and it's very comfortable. And on day 28, I was finally done and it was time to sell. The vegetable medley I snagged from Gus's trash was probably the most exciting find. Other than that, I predictably got a fair bit of straight up rubbish. As it turned out, the trash master method was quite appropriately a bit of a stinker with 1,105 gold earned in spring year one. Next up, we've got Shrek. And just as ogres have layers, onions have layers. And therefore Shrek's money-making method was exclusively spring onions. Spring onions have a chance to spawn daily in this area down here, but unlike other 
forage bulls, they don't accumulate throughout each week. They reset daily. And so I marched down there every day and picked up around five to 10 spring onions on average. But on day four, I had a realization. Your foraging level impacts the quality of foraging pickups, increasing the chance of getting silver or gold spring onions. And of course, these sell for more. I went on an absolute rampage of tree chopping in order to level up my foraging, as these provide plus 12 experience and the stumps provide plus one. I also did a big loop on Saturday day six to pick up all the forageables around the map as these give plus seven experience. And of course I kept grabbing the spring onions which give plus three experience a piece. I also repaired the bridge on the beach as there are heaps of beach forageables over here and these give experience too. By day seven, I had 58 spring onions in total, one of which was gold. And by day 10, once almost the entire map and the entire farm were clear of trees, I reached foraging level five. I picked up the gatherer perk, which I thought was a stroke of genius, but it turns out the double harvest chance doesn't apply to spring onions, so that was a disappointment. On day 13, I did my run around for forageables again, even though I had to waste a bunch of time demolishing some noobs at the egg hunt. I don't know why I bothered trying to hit level six foraging, but I was trying really hard on this run. I think I just have a deep love for Shrek. It's no wonder you don't have any friends. By day 14, the entire map was clear of trees and I'd started planting tree seeds on the farm in hopes of more trees growing in time for some more experience. And this was my haul at the two week mark. I managed to get level six foraging by day 19, so that was good, but also kind of not worth the hour I'd spent maniacally chopping trees. From there, I couldn't manage any more foraging levels, so I simply grinded out the season with lots of runs down to spring onion land. And as I ended spring, I thought to myself, so that's what an entire spring worth of spring onions looks like. I sold them all and made a solid 1588 gold, taking Shrek into second place, well ahead of Trashmaster, but unable to beat out our friend Beach Gromit. Next up, we've got the Rockstar, probably our laziest contestant and therefore my favorite. I had to make all my profit from the mining hilltop of the hilltop farm on this run. This includes some wiggly worm spots, which give a bit of clay and some artifacts, a bunch of stones, some geodes, and some copper. On my first day, I used all of my energy collecting stuff, but made sure to leave the copper nodes since the amount of copper all you get from these nodes is affected by daily luck. From here on out, I basically just slept until good luck days and then cleared the hilltop when I was feeling lucky. It seemed like at least a couple of rocks were spawning every day, so I was able to collect up a fair amount of goodies. Here was my haul on day seven, two chicken statues, which you love to see, and here's day 14. And I had a fair bit to grab on day 21 after a lazy week of sleeping, so here's my day 21 haul. I emerged once more on day 24 to use my good luck, but there wasn't any copper, so that was kind of pointless. And I had my final mining expedition on the final day of spring, ending up with this respectable haul. The sheer volume of stone got me a fair bit of gold, as well as the clay, copper ore, and coal. But the big earner was the 11 geodes at 50 gold a pop. And so I was able to pull in 1,696 gold, which puts the Rockstar in first place. Next up was Fountain Yoink. He was a very creative fellow who made gold by yoinking items from the fountain. On day one, I didn't have a fishing rod yet, so I chopped a bunch of trees to try and get level one foraging so I could make field snacks for energy, but I foolishly passed out, which meant on day two, when I got my fishing rod from Big Willy, I was on half energy. This reduced my fishing time, but I still yoinked one decorative trash can. I got a pretty sad amount of wood and stone though. It was at this point I realized it was gonna be a long spring if I literally sat here and fountain yoinked all day, every day. So I devised a plan. I decided to fish for three days and then average the yield of those three days to establish a daily average and then use that average to figure out how much I would make if I actually fished all of spring. In other words, I was lazy. I know you may be disappointed in me for fluffing this part of the challenge, but let's be honest, who can be bothered fishing in a fountain for hours on end? So I ate whatever forageables I found to extend my energy, but essentially each day's fountain fishing was limited by energy and not time. I came away with an average of 16 wood, 19 stone, and three decorative trash cans each day. Can you believe that? An average of three decorative trash cans each day, that's, that's nuts. And after these three days, there were 23 more days left in spring. Once I did the maths, my totals were 428 wood, 504 stone and 69 decorative trash cans. I can't sell the trash cans, but they sure look pretty. But the wooden stones sell for two gold each. So once I sold them all, I pulled in 1,864 gold, which put Fountain Yoink in the lead. And then there was one, one weed whacker. Weed whacker was indeed a whacker of weeds who had to make gold exclusively through selling fiber. The strategy was simple. Clear the entire map of fiber and then wait for day five, because on day five, I was able to hit up the mines. Fun fact, weeds have a 50% chance of dropping fiber. So once I 
cleared the entire map of every weed I could find. I had an impressive 359 fiber already. Then I slept until day five and hit up the mines. Except this was kind of a mistake. I completely forgot how hard it is to progress in the mines without good daily luck and food. And I had neither of these things on my side. I can't control my daily luck, but instead of sleeping, I should have at least grown my parsnips and foraged for food. As it was, I really struggled. I wanted to get to level 15 because it seems fiber doesn't spawn until you're below level 10. And also because you can spam reset level 15, but it took me literally four days to get that deep. I kept passing out in the mines because I was getting flustered. And then that just meant I had no energy to progress the next day. I think I died once as well, but let's not dwell on that. I finally got to level 15 early on day nine and spent the rest of that day resetting level 15. And uh, it was long. And so taking inspiration from Fountain Yoink, I decided to be lazy, except I was even more lazy because rather than getting a sample size of three days, I just did one full day and used that as my number to figure out how much I'd get if I did the whole of spring. So day 10 was my full day of resetting level 15 and it was quite fruitful. I simply reset as quick as possible. And if I saw like six or more weeds on a level, I would clear it. The full day took me about 22 minutes. And once I was done, I came away with 260 fiber earned. Then it was time for maths. There were 18 days left of spring. So it was 18 times 260 plus whatever I'd earned earlier in the run. And I ended up with 5,550 fiber collected. These sell for one gold a piece. So the weed whacker stormed into first place by over 3,000 gold. A worthy victory indeed. If you enjoyed this video, check out this playlist of Stardew Valley challenge videos. Cheers.